Welcome to the Right Hour Podcast. Hello and welcome Hello. to the Right Hour Podcast. You are... I am Marie Dreisey and you are... Good question. I am Farah <laughs> Sultani. Welcome to our fourth episode of the Right Hour Podcast. Number four. The, the new writing podcast, Thrash Night. If you haven't heard this before, I was going to tell you to stop listening and then go back and listen from episode one, but I'm not going to do that no. because a friend of mine told me... Told me, told me. Look, I went. was listening to your other podcast while I was driving, mm -hmm. and then you said, don't listen to this until you listen to the other podcast. And I was like, oh, but I've not listened to the other podcast. And so you stopped So I listening. paused it and then put the radio on. Radio on, radio on, radio on. Radio on, radio on, radio on. I asked her, did you listen to the other ones? And she said, no. Wow. So uh, basically, Farak's terrible at giving advice. Yes. Um, uh, you, will, you now find us in much best mood, as you can see. Yeah. But after coming back from um, an unforeseen accidental June break. Yep. Um, which happened because... Some technical issues, some personal issues, some health issues, issues. Some issues, some health issues. The fact that my um, body decided to disintegrate... And um, <clears throat> for anyone who has read or seen the comic book series or the film um, uh, Watchmen um, and knows about Dr. Manhattan, you will know that putting back together a body that has disintegrated takes quite a while. Yeah, I mean, Frog's basically now actually just a, a head in a jar with some fluid in it. There's oh, no yeah. actual body attached. Yeah. Um, so it's quite easier to transport now, which is nice. Yeah. Um, Just roll me down. Yep, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Just look out. Yeah. Um, I think I would be very good at bowling now. Yeah. But not as a player. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what do we have um, after coming back from our summer non-holidays? We've got our first piece, Brothers in Arms by Warren Paul Glover. Lads, Sergeant, sir, I hate them. The battle police? Yes. They scare the hell out of me. Why do they have to be so intimidating? <laughs> to ensure we'll go over the top and not desert. I don't know what's worse. Getting done by the jerry or getting done by your own side. Oh, getting done by the military police is much worse. Think of the shame of it. What the family would have to bear. The rain's easing. Do you think we'll go? I hope not. We won't get far in all this mud. Slipping and sliding all over the place. But I wouldn't put it past them. Pray for more rain is my advice, kid. It's hard to believe, isn't it? What's hard to believe? That we'll go in this weather? Or hard to believe in the strategy of our great generals? For all their undoubted wisdom? Neither. Both. I was talking about God. You mentioned praying, but it's hard to believe there's a God in this hellhole. you got to believe in something, kid. A man will go mad without something to believe in, especially here. It's not a lack of belief that sends you mad here, it's the shell shock. Let's hope God saves us from that fate and returns us both home safe and sound. Home. How I miss home. Of course you do. Me too. I miss my Mary. If anything happens to me, you'll take care of her. Won't you? Kid? Nothing's going to happen to you. You were born lucky. You'll stay lucky. What do you mean by that? 
I was born lucky. You've got the looks, team captain at sports, you can sing, and you've got the best girl in town. Give over. You can sing as well as I can, but you're right about the sports. And the looks. And the girl. I sure did hit lucky when Mary said yes to marrying me. I painted the town red while everyone else was green with envy that night. The men, I mean. Girls too. I know a few had their eye on you, brother. There were a few green girls broken-hearted that night too. Aye. But at least the field's clear for you now. You can have your pick of the pretty lasses when you get home. No, I can't. What do you mean? Nothing. Never mind. Go on. Is there something you're not telling me, little brother? No. I think there is. <laughs> Tell. My girl's already spoken for. So she's not my girl at all. Well, she is, sort of. But she's not really mine. Never will be, either. What does all that mean? Either she is, or she isn't. It's complicated. Ah. I get it. She's married. You sly old dog. Who is she then? Let's talk about something else. What? You're not going to tell your big brother who she is? Come on. We've never kept secrets from each other. Why start now? Why can't we talk about something else? I can't think of anything better to talk about. Well, try, big brother, try. OK. So you never answered me. If I don't make it... You'll look after Mary for me, won't you? I know she likes you. Not long till dawn. What's the matter? Nothing. Nothing's the matter. Come on. You can't kid me, kid. What's wrong? I'm just, I'm just scared, that's all. No. There's more to it than that. There's something you're not telling me. I don't like to hear you talk like that way, that's all. I was only saying. Well, don't. Of course you're going to make it home. Mother will kill me if you don't. And she'll kill me if I don't look after your scrawny backside. You're the apple of her eye, young'un. Well, don't let's talk her, ma'am. I can't bear to think of her worrying so. It's a mother's job to worry. You can't stop her. But at least she's got Mary to keep her company. Mary. Is Mary happy, brother? I mean, when we were back home, not now, before the war. What sort of a question is that? Of course she's happy. At least I think so. She never said otherwise. Unless... Do you know something I don't, little brother? No, no. I was just asking. Just asking? That's a very strange question to ask, if you ask me. Are you sure you don't know something? Not keeping anything from me? Are you? No. Because if you are, I'll have to force it out of you. Brother or no brother. Come on. Let's not argue. They'll be fighting enough soon without us fighting each other. Now why would I have to fight you, little brother? No cause that I can think of. Come on, I was just passing time. And we might not have much of that left, so don't let's fight. You never were much of a fighter. I always had to dig you out of trouble. The rain stopped. Do you think we'll go? Don't be scared, little brother. You'll be all right. Don't worry. How can you be so sure? We've lost a lot of men in this war. What makes you think I'm going to survive? Because I asked the big fella up there. And I promised Mother I'd look after you. Mary too. Mary quite specifically asked me to look after you. Now why is that, do you think? If we go over the top, it's every man for himself. There'll be no looking after me in that chaos. You just stick close to me, kid. Keep your friends close, but your enemies closer. I'll see to you. See if I don't. You can't help everything, though, can you? You can't control everything, or everyone. No, I suppose not. But we're in this together, right? 
we're in it together, and we'll come out of it together. Somehow. We'll find a way. I'll find a way. You're so certain of yourself, aren't you? I have faith in God and myself. What's wrong with that? Do you not think you can be a little too arrogant sometimes, brother? Is this jealousy from the runt of the litter against the top dog? Maybe if you weren't so self-centred you'd see things. Like what? What are you saying? Let's leave it. Oh, let's not. You started it, kid. Finish it. No, I never started anything. It's, it's just... fatigue. I haven't slept properly for days. Dreaming about your girl? Oh, sorry. She's not your girl, is she? She's somebody else's. Who is she? Your scarlet woman. Knock it off. It's Mary, isn't it? Don't be daft. No. It all makes sense now. The scales have fallen from my eyes. She always did have a soft spot for you. Brother. Sweet, sensitive little William. Humphrey, look, I... There goes the call. I'm sorry, brother. I want her to tell you. Look after Mary, kid. I love you both. Charge! Brother, what have you done? Don't leave me to the battle police. Here's another coward. No, please. You don't understand. And he's only gone and stabbed himself to get out of it. You make me sick. Shoot him, Corporal! No, no! And that was Brothers in Arms by Warren Paul Glover, directed by Edward Grand Lindup. The character of William was played by Cyril Blake. The character of Humphrey was by Chris Railton. And the military policeman by Mark Insull. You like the First World War. What did you think of that? Or do you just like like it uh, to the point where it Franz started. Ferdinand yeah. died? Because, I mean, well, I mean you, sm- you spend your spare time with cats. Franz Ferdinand. Yes, the Archduke Franz Ferdinand, yeah. endlessly fascinating guy. Highly recommend. Uh, I think we mentioned him briefly in the last episode, huh? but I will tell you that Marie has just spent about half an hour just talking about nothing but Franz Ferdinand. And that, that's a conservative figure. I and, mean, that's that's a very generous figure on my end. And yeah, yeah, and and during the breaks where she wasn't talking about Franz Ferdinand, she was talking about her social life, which circles around Franz Ferdinand. So yep. her her friends are all Franz Ferdinandites. There's a reason I don't get invited to parties. <laughs> yeah, it's not that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I really that piece I am um, I think the yeah. relig- I think um, the relationship between brothers and the relationship between comrades and the relationship between rivals are all different yeah. things and I think seeing them matched is a recipe for drama yeah well especially I mean it war is a, an extreme circumstance and you already have you know two people that have a very set established relationship before they get there and then suddenly they're thrown in this extreme circumstance and what does that do to mm. to personalities what does that do to those those tendencies already there I think it's quite interesting and also the reality that like you know being shot for desertion was was very commonplace and, and acceptable yeah um, so uh, the next piece we've got today is Sleep Tight by Helen East Oh, oh, are you 
all right? I get clumsy when I'm tired. Hmm. How much longer have you got to go? Two very long weeks. It'll soon pass. Can I have that in writing? <laughs> this will be my fifth. I think this is going to be my first and my last. It's my turn. It's the last one on the left. Are you sure you feel OK? I could ask for a wheelchair. No. Thanks. I'm getting that big, I'd better make the most of my feet before they disappear altogether. Sorry, it's a bit cold. Uh, it's all right. Everything looks good to me and the placenta is no longer low-lying. That's a relief. The heart is beating nice and strong. Would you like to hear? Yes, please. What time is it? Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to wake you. Do you know what time it is? We did it. Great, I'm trying to get to sleep. But it works. What works? The via viz, the device we've been working on. I was going to try it, but people drank. Great, now, please stop talking. We're going to make a fortune. Chris, go to sleep. No more worries. Hey, I might even get an award. Will you please go to sleep? What's wrong? How did it go at the clinic? I'll tell you when I wake up. How does I ever get any bloody sleep? I fancy a drink, how about you? Chris! One gherkin butty coming up. Thanks. Are you sure everything's all right? Yeah. It's never kicked like this before. Is there anything I can do? You could get me a triple vodka and tonic and a couple of sleeping pills so I can get some sleep before I get even more cabbaged. Hey, why don't you have a go with the Viavis? Its whole purpose is to relax people. You just want another guinea pig. You're the one with insomnia. Hey, Pete slept for hours after, and he saw his mum. If I say no, you won't let it drop, will you? I'm only trying to help. Sorry. Look, I promise, as soon as it's out, I'll stop acting like Godzilla's mother and go back to being the wife you know and love and adore. <laughs> if you get any bigger, I won't be able to get my arms around you. <laughs> there we go. It will be all right, won't it? I wouldn't suggest it if it wasn't. I was talking about the baby. Oh, sorry. OK. OK, I'll give in. But if it doesn't work, I am definitely hitting the vodka. What do I have to do? Nothing. Just sit back and relax. Fat chance of that with Junior practising for Man City on my bladder. Right, are you alright? Do you need another cushion? Just get on with it. Just let feelings of calmness flow over your head and shoulders. <laughs> let the feelings you don't have to do this. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Legs, right to the tips of your toes. You feel so relaxed. So peaceful. So oh. calm. Oh. Let these feelings of oh. peace and tranquility I'll leave you flow to it. all around you. And as you drift deeper into this lovely state of peace, let me take you deeper, mm. even more relaxed. Deeper. Three. Down to two. Deepest of all. One. Enjoy how peaceful and calm you feel. You are in a garden. Listen to the birds. Smell the flowers. Feel the grass beneath your toes. It is a very special garden. As you walk around the garden you see a wall with a door. You go through the door into your own very special place. A place only you know. You feel so at peace. With these feelings of tranquility, you may want to talk to someone. It may be someone you have lost. 
someone you never had the chance to say goodbye to. You may want to tell them how you feel. How much you miss them. Or maybe there is something you wish you had done. Well now you can. Remember you are in control. Take your time, and when you have said, and when you have done, all you want to, you will leave your special place, and you will carry these feelings of peace with you. As you, wake. Hiya, oh, yeah, Ames. Long time no see. Jack? Jack? What are you doing here? What, what the hell? You look as gorgeous as ever. It's all right, Amy. You're just pregnant and a bit mad. That's why you're seeing your ex-boyfriend in your weird hallucination dream. It's fine. Just breathe. It's all right. Maybe you'll go away. I'm here. I I'm real and I'm with you. Being pregnant suits you. I, I don't understand. Why did you get rid of our baby? I'd have looked after you. Chris! Well, that's all in the past. You're here now. That's all that matters. Hell, what are you... Jack, get out of my head. I love you, Amy. Leave me alone, please. I can't. I love you. Take a look around and say goodbye to the past. You're not leaving me again. Let go of me. Chris! Chris! Help! Four. Please, Jack, just let me go. Three. You're staying here with me where you belong. Jack, Jack please, please, no. Jack, no! Open your eyes now. Open your eyes. Yeah. I made you a brew. How was it? Amy. Amy? Amy! So that was Sleep Tight by Helen East, directed by Edward Grand Lindup. Character of Amy was played by Lizzie Wolford. The character of Chris by Cyril Blake. The character of Jack by Chris Railton. The character of the nurse, myself, Murray Dreisey. The character of the woman, Zara Tompkinson. Yeah, so that was Sleep Tight. Yeah, and you were in it. I was. You were properly in it. You... You've made all of this effort just so that you can be in a podcast. Because <laughs> oh. you've always wanted to be an actor no. and Hollywood just does not have the heart for you. No. Well, and Farrakh should know this because I, Farrakh was one of my tutors for a time. And whenever the question was, would anybody like to read for us? I immediately looked at every single thing on the floor. Yeah. To avoid any eye contact. I think I once climbed under the table accidentally to retrieve a pencil while volunteers were being picked. Yeah, but you, you still like the sort of the glitz and the glamour of the acting The glitz world. and the glamour. <laughs> uh, so sleep tight. Sleep tight. That um... Um, it involves a very creepy countdown. Um, but... This one. Yeah. Do, 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 do. That's my creepy sound effect. Oh, did, did you mean? Do, 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 yes. But you're you're doing it right. You're doing it on on the correct scale. So it's not. Do, 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 do. You're saying. La, 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 la. <laughs> <laughs> wow, there's so much time spent on this one one sound effect. I'm, I'm gonna play it. Okay. It sounds like this. Okay. And, and our audience can judge which one of us is right. That, okay. 
Judge, and let us know online what you think. Who's right? Yeah. The winner gets uh, pineapple. That's a terrible prize. I hate pineapple. And he knows that. Have you ever put a piece of, piece of pineapple on a piece of meat? No. It will eat the piece of meat. The pineapple That's is carnivorous. That's horrifying. Yeah, it's like kiwi. Put, Why put would a, you give that as a prize? Put a... Um, a a murderous out, pineapple. Turns out I'm evil. <laughs> <laughs> turns out like we all didn't know that. <laughs> it's a very eerie one. Yeah. I think the thing that I really liked about it is this idea of your subconscious and what are the things that plague you in your subconscious? What sort of lying right under the surface that just takes very little to, to get at you? It also... Um, Made me think. So when I when we when we recorded it, I thought, "Wow, this is sort of like Black Mirror, you yeah. know, like a device that can send you deep into the consciousness." But this morning, while I was on the way to work, I saw a tube advert which literally said, "This: Do you have trouble remembering your dreams?" It's a feeling we at insert company name here. We're not going to do free advertising for yep, you. Sorry. Pay us. Yep, call um, us. Know only too well. You're deep in a surreal world where you can be anybody you like, where you can do anything, and then you wake up and the dream fades. It's gone like smoke on the breeze, or is it? Ooh. Here at insert company name here, we've built something we call a dream camera. Just call or text the number that we're not going to tell you. And we'll get your dreams back. So this is the yeah. kind of world that we're actually... That we're heading towards. Yeah. Do, 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 do. No, I won't do no, that. No, no, go for it. I you that. No, no, he's going to judge me again. You were doing it right this time. Was that right? Do, 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 do. No. no he's, now he's made me self-conscious. What so, is on the next piece? Uh, the next piece is Is Vic There by Tom Daldry. Do you want to close the door? It's nippy, isn't it? I'll do it then, if you're just going to stare at that screen. Kids and mobile phones. I don't know why your mother... There are biscuits in the cupboard. Would you like a biscuit? Not now. It's not often that I leave the caravan. I went to get you some biscuits, especially. Wouldn't you like one? Maybe later. Your birthday's coming up. Mm -hmm. oh, will you put that phone down? Pardon? Who are you talking to? It's Vic. Vic? Vic. He was here earlier in the summer for a holiday. Would you like to go for a walk? He was here and we'd leave the caravan at dawn and we'd play by the canal all day. A walk would be nice, wouldn't it? <laughs> he said he wishes he lived in a caravan park as well. What about a walk to the canal? It's time for a biscuit. I don't want one. All boys want biscuits. Here it comes. It's flying out of the airport. It's making its way into your mouth. And if the mouth won't open, we pinch and open wide and it's landed. Good morning, Mary. I've changed the linen. I've scrubbed the bathroom. Are you eating a biscuit? I didn't want it. Are you feeding him biscuits? I went out especially. He's diabetic. He's... Why are you feeding my son biscuits? All boys want biscuits, Joe. He's diabetic. Why? It could kill him. You're done for the morning. Can we go to the canal, Mum? Once we've been paid. Now we'll check your blood sugar. Then we'll go to the canal. Be careful. Where is he today? It's his birthday soon. Is he at your caravan? Ten years old. I want to save up, get him something smart. I mean, that Vic, he gave him that phone so they keep in touch and that. Vic? Oh, uh, a boy, a pal, teenager. Here earlier in the summer. They got on a treat. He might be by the canal. 
It's dangerous. They should cordon it off. What, what if he's... He isn't by the canal. Where is he, then? You shouldn't have given him a biscuit. Must be lonely, a boy of his age, all alone, place like this. He said you force-fed him. He's welcome here, you know. Any time. Now, this dust is a nightmare, Mary. I'm worried. What if he's by the canal? What? I'm worried I'm going to find him. The canal isn't safe. Mary, he's not at the canal. He's at our caravan. He might choke on something. It isn't safe. He's only nine. You shouldn't leave him alone like that. It's dangerous. It's irresponsible. How could you? If he was my son... Oh, he didn't want to come, OK? He's frightened of you. You're, you. You mistreat him. You scare him. You should stop cleaning. What? I'm not going to pay you. But I've been here all morning. You've been nattering all morning. Look, Mary, it's his birthday coming up. But I'll pay you double. What? From now on, I'll pay you double if you bring the boy. I just want to chat with him. You know how much he helps me. It's good for him and for me. It's good for you. It'll be good for you too. I'll, uh, I'll have to ask him. Well, this is, this is for today. Uh, well, it's double. Bring him tomorrow. You're on that phone again. I'm messaging Vic. I'm here. I'm right here. How long have you lived here? Why do you ask that? I'm interested. Years. Years and years. I came on holiday years ago. I bought a caravan here. Years ago. You fell in love with it, like Vic. You know you're welcome here any time. <sighs> what? It's Vic. He might be able to come down for my birthday. Will I get to meet him? Mum, Vic might be coming for my birthday. Well, that's nice. Tell Mary about Vic. I know about Vic. Well, we met at the start of the holidays. I know. And we played and we became best friends. I know. And we played by the canal and I kept going back. Shut up about Vic! Will you please stop talking about Vic? I'm sick to hear of hearing about bloody Vic! <laughs> OK, OK, come on. Look, go back home. I'll see you later, OK? You shouldn't shout at him. You shouldn't scare him like that. He's only little. I think you're done for the morning. I think you're done. Now, Mary, it's his birthday tomorrow. You promised to pay double. You're done. I'm coming, Vic. I'm coming to find you. I'll meet you at the train station. You're on your way? I've had enough. It's my birthday tomorrow. We'll spend it together, won't we? We can go round town. You said you show me how to nick stuff. I'll be ten. I'll be big. I'll see you at the train station. Mary? Mary, is he here? What? You're done for the morning. My son, is he here? No. I can't can... find him. He's not at home. I've searched everywhere. No. No, 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 not again, no. Well, he isn't here. No, again, no. I can't, Joan. You know what happened. It's, oh, not again. You promise. Please, Mary, you're not, no. you're not hiding him. No. No, no, not again. I, I can't. Oh, he'll be with that Vic. He'll be that Vic. He'll be with that Vic. Call the police. Hello? Police? Police, please, I'm looking for my, uh, my, my son. He's gone missing. I can't, I can't find him anywhere. Boy who fits the description, he's waiting by the entrance. I'll go talk to him. Hello, son. I think your mother's looking for you. My mother's dead. 
I think she's looking for you. I don't. You're not waiting for someone, are you? No. Your mother's worried about you, son. Come on. I'll take you home. Come on. Oh, thank God you're home. Thank Christ. I was so worried. He was by the station, Mum, waiting for someone. I wasn't. Well, come here. It's his birthday tomorrow. I was so... Oh, thank God you found him. It's what we do, ma'am. Happy birthday for tomorrow, son. But what on earth were you doing, running away like that? It was her. Ah, you were going to meet that Vic. No, Mum. Don't lie to me. He's a bad influence, that Vic, isn't he? Mum. You're strange about him. I don't want you talking to him anymore. But, Mum... I'm going to take your phone away. No, Mum, he's coming later. He was going to meet me. Give me your phone. Mum, can't I just tell him then that I can't meet him later so he's not waiting? I'll type it. Give me your phone. Hi, Vic. Can't meet later. OK? Sent. He's my best friend. Mum, it's so lonely here. Come on. School starts soon. You have friends there. <laughs> Listen, I'm cleaning that caravan down by the canal tomorrow. I'm going to need you to go to Mary's until I get back. Mum, she's horrible. I can't trust you not to run away. She'll keep an eye on you. I promised Vic I'd see him on my birthday. You stay with Mary. You can see Vic after. Under my supervision in our caravan. Fair? No. Oh. Well, like it or lump it. OK. Like it? OK. Good boy. I'll write to Vic. I'll tell him to come over later tomorrow. Now, I want you to be good for Mary, OK? I want you to be good. Do you hear me? And then we can see Vic after. And I'll show you what I've got you for your birthday. OK? OK. Joan. Mary, I know I'm not on shift. I'm sorry to bother you, but... Well... <laughs> It's my son. It's his birthday. Oh, happy birthday, young man. Ten! Ten today! I've got to clean a caravan down the way and he asked if he could spend some time with you instead of sitting with boring old me. <laughs> he? He asked? Is that OK? Oh, he's welcome any time. You know that, don't you? Thank you. Come in, come in. Oh, just don't give him sugar, OK? OK. Yes, OK. Come on. I'll see you later. Behave. And thank you, Mary. Oh, Let's get you a nice drink of... Uh, milk. Oh. Would you like a biscuit? It is your birthday. I'm diabetic. Oh, of course, of course. How does it feel, then, being ten? It's weird. Yes. Yes, it is, isn't it? Has Vic wished you a happy birthday? Don't know. Mum took my phone. She did, did she? Well, young man, guess what? I know how much you like to keep in touch with Vic. And so I got you a present. I went out, especially. So we can keep in touch. Just us. A phone! I was going to give it to you next time your mum came, but look. It's top of the range and it's a secret, OK? So we can stay in touch all the time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome, son. May I, may I look at it alone? Oh, of course, yes. Of course, if you want. There's a bed made up in the twin room, if you want. Fresh linen. Thank you. I'll... I'll make us some lunch. Sugar-free lunch. Vic. Vic, it's me. I've got a phone for my birthday from that bitch. I've got a phone. I can come and meet you. Just tell me when you get this message. Just tell me and I'll sneak away and I'll come and meet you. I'll write the note now so I'll be ready whenever. I'm going to meet Vic. We agreed that on my 10th birthday, I promised on my life, by the canal. We'll be by the canal. 
Your lunch is ready. I've made you some rice cakes. Do oh, you like your phone? Yes, thank you. They're clever, aren't they? We ought to take a selfie. After lunch, then? Yes. Would you like some tea? Caffeine's bad for you. Oh, I won't put any sugar in it. I'll make some tea. If you ever feel like stopping by, you're always welcome. Thank you. Just contact me. Mary? Yes? I'm used to having an afternoon nap. Of course! Shall we take a selfie? Yes, yes! Oh, look at that. Oh, isn't that clever? Yes. Be sure to send it to me. May I be excused? Of course, yes. Yes, rest well. Thank you. I'm coming, Vic. I'm climbing out the window. Got off a little early. Told him it was his birthday. How's he been? He went for a nap about an hour ago. Oh, I asked him to stay with you. Would you like a biscuit? I thought you'd keep an eye on him. I've been here by the door. I'm here to wake him up. He's asleep. Joan, I'll pay you. I want to see my son. Well, where is he? Mary, where is he? Mary, the window's open. Oh, my God. Where is my son? Is that... What's that? I'm going to meet Vic. We agreed that on my 10th birthday, I, I promise on my life, by the canal. We'll be by the canal. Joan, what does it say? No, 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 not again. Oh, there might be time if I'm quick. Joan? I'm, if I'm quick, I might... Joan? My fucking son! Hello, hello, please. Is my son? Joan? Well, nothing I can say can help. Hanged himself. Just... But I'm here, you know. You're welcome here any time. The canal. Just... Just... Just what, Joan? There. It's... It's heartbreak. It's grief. It's anger. It's pain. He never leaves. But it blends in. In time. His phone. I took it away. If I hadn't taken it from him, then maybe he'd never have gone. Oh, you can't hear this, Joan. But in time... Half an hour. For the body. Yes. I took a photo. With his phone. Joan. My son. Look, that's my son. My dead son. I'm never going to see him again. Never again. Enough of that. This, no, this. It's all I have left of him. I promised on my life. Enough. By the canal. Enough. Give, give that here. Oh, that's mine. Joan, you know it happened to my son. How? How did you get through it? Oh, I didn't. But you learned to live with it. Ten years old. He was ten. Mary, it was his fucking birthday. I was going to make tea for him and that fucking friend of his and tell him that I loved him because I never fucking said it enough. Oh, I told him not to go to that canal. I told him. I told my son ten years ago, we came on holiday here. I told him they were a bad influence. Led there by a group of youths. He never listened to me. He'd never listened to me. Not once. Never. 
body dredged up a day later. A tragic accident. They all attested it was a tragic accident. And you know what? It killed me, Joan. And it kills me each and every day. There's never been anything left, never since. And I get through it, Joan, because there's nothing else to do. And there's no way to live. Not with the bane. And there's no way through it. Mary, I'm sorry. Oh, it's fine. But why? Why on earth? How could you stay? Well, how could you keep a hold of that note? And why will you treasure it and revile it and want it and hate it and keep it close to you forever and keep reading it until it becomes the very reason you exist? It... Mary, I don't know. Could I have stopped it? I... I should never have left him. I shouldn't have left him with you. Joan, I'm sorry. No, no, this is not your fault. No, it's your fault. Joan, no! And you killed him. You should have kept an eye on him. He shouldn't have been at that canal. Oh! You're a murderer! Stop it! Let go of me! Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Just... Just stop it! <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. Mary, it's the grief. I don't know. I'm sorry. Oh, I don't know what came over me. He's gotten another investigation. They, you know, last time, I wonder if it was rigged. If the police held back evidence because they were all kids. Forever, he's gone. Oh, I've lost it for a second time. I've lost a son. It's... It's that Vic. <sighs> that fucking Vic murdered him. They'll investigate for murder. I can't cope, Joan. Not with another investigation. We're giving witness statements and testimonials. I can't do it again, Joan, after what happened. Mary, what are you doing? I'm going, Joan. I'm not a part of this. Not again. I've been here too long. I'm sorry for what I said. I, I'm, I'm sorry. I'll never see him again. I've lost my fucking son, Mary. Please, just until the police get here. There's nowhere to go. I'm going before they get here. And you should too. When the investigation's over. Oh, I need you, Mary. Only you understand. Use this place if you need it. <sighs> Let go of me, Joan. I'm going. Let go. I hope the investigation goes well. Mary? OK, you can come out now. <laughs> Thanks, oh. Mum. Oh, she didn't mean to frighten you. But she's gone now. <laughs> oh, well done for hiding. <laughs> Happy birthday. Come on. Well, come on. Pull it. <laughs> Happy birthday. Thanks, Mum. Oh. Thanks for getting rid of her. <laughs> it's the best present a boy could ask for. Oh, I said I had a nice surprise planned. <laughs> <gasps> oh, should we get you some cake? Hmm? To celebrate our happy new home. <laughs> oh. Let's get you some cake. How's Vic? Fine, thanks. You left your voicemail? Oh, I left that selfie up. <laughs>
of you and Mary. <laughs> Happy birthday. <laughs> Aren't you going to have some? Oh, not for me. <gasps> Should we go to the canal later? No, oh, thank you. Spare key, I forgot... my... All right, that was Is Vic There by Tom Daughtry, directed by Shalini Adnani. The character of Mary was played by Sophie Wright Palmer. The character of Joan was played by Zara Tompkinson. The character of the boy was played by Safira Plesser de Silva. And the character of the police officer by Jason Denton. Yay! Yay! Um, that, if you recall, was one of my favorite pieces when we first saw the submissions. Yep. Um, I just find it extremely atmospheric, mm -hmm. and also I like the fact that the child is a bit evil, <laughs> and I also like the fact that um, I think its depiction of care as an intrusion is a beautiful yeah. and rare thing. Yeah, I think that's definitely a really interesting... Because usually, if you have one character who is caring... And one character who rejects the care. Generally, you go for the character who's caring against the character who's yeah, rejecting. Yeah, you, your sympathy is, is with the person giving versus yeah. the one refusing. Whereas in this piece, I feel like like all three are terrible people. <laughs> <laughs> they all have their, their bad sides. You know, they have their, their, their difficulties. Mm. Um... But yeah, but yeah, it's um, it's a great, a great reveal at the end. I think it's just. I think it was the one that I was the most excited about doing sound for out of like the twenty that I read the first round. Yeah, you want the drone of the rain all mm. through, uh, but you also want the the sense of claustrophobia, the sense of claustrophobia. Um, what my Scottish accent was... just comes up. Um, the t don't laugh at me because I said Scottish things, <laughs> which was the motto of Prime Minister Gordon Brown. <laughs> <coughs> I'm just friends for now. I'm just. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, you want to do it? It's my second language. Come on, it's it's a it's a bizarre phenomenon. Yeah. I can actually speak like this. Yeah, but there um, wasn't a language. There was an accent. <laughs> That's true. It's not like he fell into Dutch I mean, suddenly. I I, I I um um so so that is all we have in terms of pieces today. But we do have another little thing we've got to do before we go. Yes, we've we got to, to thank play the banjo. Oh, Patreons. Sorry. Thank the <laughs> He always brings out the banjo. Well, instead of the banjo, we want to bring out a special thank you to Carol and James for their uh, donations. It's very greatly appreciated. Um, this is not a easy or cheap endeavor yeah. to create. Particularly if your bodily disintegration occurs. Yeah. Um, so this is all completely self-funded as of this point. So we don't get any outside funding. We don't have any sponsors. So it's all sort of self-funded by myself, yeah. uh, which is uh, doable, but not sustainable. Uh, so we would like to thank our two Patreon uh, donators, um, Carol and James. Once yeah. again, thank you. Thank you, um, Carol. Thank you, Carol. Thank you, James. Thank you, James. I thought you were coming at this point to sing with me, but this is a bit awkward. <laughs> this um, is so much more fun for me. Um, so if you song. would like Farak to sing your name for the next episode. <laughs> <laughs> I will literally, if, I, if, if you join our Patreons and mm -hmm. become a Patreon, I will yes. write you a song. We will absolutely do that. So, so if you yeah. want your own special song on a podcast episode... Just uh, hop over to Patreon, the Right Hour podcast. You can find us on there. We've got three donation tiers, 
feel free, anyone. Every little bit helps, and we greatly appreciate it. Yeah. And James and Carol, I hope you liked your song. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, free to be you and me, Farak. Free to be you and me. Well, for you to be you, I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that I, right. I, I, I claimed the last word I claimed the last word for this episode. Yay! Yay! Um Okay. We need to say other things, don't we? What else do we need to say? Um please share, please subscribe, oh, yes. please rate. Six people have rated us. Come on guys. Yeah. Press the button. Yep. Rate us. We're nice. We're very well, nice. Well uh, we're nice on aggregate. And that's the last insult of the day. <laughs> oh, sorry. Did I not do that one right? No, that was good. That was, okay. that was good. Oh, that that actually leaves us on a positive note. It does. Unless one of us ruins it. We probably will. So, uh, like, share, subscribe, show everybody, tell your friends, tell your family, and uh, have them tune in. And that's it. Goodbye. Goodbye. We didn't ruin it. Thank you. I can be nice when called upon. It's just not often called upon. <laughs> <laughs> Answer your phone. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs>